What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's all T, all Shay, love and hip-hop. New York season 10, episode 12 review, but before I start, I have some behind-the-scenes tea on the upcoming season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, reports detail that rapper Light Skin Keisha has joined the cast. If uh, you know, might know her from her music or from her YouTube channel where her boyfriend, um, I really like her personality on YouTube. I do follow her channel, The Bangos. Um, uh, her her dude's couple channel. I think she's so funny. She's really close friends with B. Simone. So I can't wait to see what she's going to do on the show because she's really already got a huge following, which I guess this is the thing that she feels is going to take her career to the next level. Also, um, Kiyomi from Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta, Bow Wow's ex-girlfriend, the one that he physically assaulted, um, or she physically assaulted him. They both was fighting each other, whatever the case may be. She's joining the cast as well. Um, the new season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta begins next month. Um, I can't wait to see the trailer to see if I'm going to even be excited about the new trailer. I mean, the new season. So on tonight's episode of Love and Hip Hop, um, New York for a minute, I even thought about not doing the review because tonight to me was like a filler episode. It really wasn't a lot going on. So I'm just going to skim through the things I feel like or am worth talking about because a lot of this shit was just stuff that was reiterated and has been reiterated over and over and over again. First thing I want to talk about is where's Janoske? Janoske, Jana, whatever her name is. We ain't seen her since episode three. They done phased little mama the hell out. Like, she must have had no storyline because... <laughs> I forgot all about it. Like, you ain't seen her in the background. She ain't been invited to none of the parties. Where is she at? Do I need to make a shirt? Where is Janoske? Does she need to be put on a milk cart and work? Are you, sis? Um, so what else I want to talk about? Uh, Sin and Jonathan and Yandy meet up and they talk about everything that's been going on. And she basically says that she still loves Joe and that if he wants to work things out, she's on that same level. But later on in the episode, Remy and Joe are talking while they're filming State of the Culture. And she says, you know, I just want you and Sam to work things out and for y'all to be happy together. And he was like, that's not the vibe. Like, he ain't checking for her like she's still checking for him. Which further makes me feel like him and Tahiri um, might have some more going on than what we have been shown. And that's why when her and Sin had that meetup, she was like, I don't think he's telling you everything. I'm like, mm, I mean, it's a lot that you don't know. So we shall see. Um, basically on tonight's episode two, Eric and Safari are preparing for the baby. His new album was about to drop at the time. And, you know, she was concerned because she was nine months pregnant. She was about to have a baby. And, um, she they had to pack up their New Jersey home so they can move back to Atlanta so she can have the baby in Atlanta. I think Doc was Dr. Um I don't know why I was gonna say Dr. Heavenly, not Heavenly Child. Um, what's her name? Simone. What I can't figure think of the goddamn woman name, but y'all know who I'm talking about from Married to Medicine. I can't remember if she's her doctor or what. Maybe I'm wrong. A whole bunch of y'all ain't got to tell me the name in the comment section. It ain't that deep, child. Um but his new album is coming out and he's preparing for his album release party. She is partied out. You know, they had the wedding and the baby shower, bridal shower. She is just over it at this point. She wants him to focus on being a father and a husband. Um, they go to a, a event of his and it's a whole bunch of people out in Brooklyn and he gets up on his billboard. This, All of this that we saw in tonight's episode actually was just filmed like literally no more than three weeks ago. So I'm loving the fact that this season, they're on Love & Hip Hop New York and Miami, that they've been doing stuff that literally just happened in real life time, either a few weeks ago or whatever. Like, Because, you know, normally everything was filmed six months prior to what we will be seeing right now. So I'm loving that they're trying to keep it as close to, you know, what's happening in the cast member lives right now. Um... So, Fresh
Asher is still working on the money to pay back Jada. He meets up with Jen at the arcade. I don't know why they met up at the arcade to talk. I don't know if their kids was there. He tell her he miss her. He miss, you know, sleeping with her, that he's been working with Olivia. He says he took out a loan and put down a payment on the house that she wanted. How are you taking out loans, sir, and putting down money on said houses and you owe somebody $40,000? Like, how does that make sense? You just putting yourself in more and more and more and more debt. So he tells Jen that he worked out a deal with Jada. She doesn't like that he met with her by himself and that she wants all of them to sit down. Of course, he ain't with that because he knows if they both sit down at the same time, all his bullshit is going to come out about how he loves Jada and the extent of their relationship. He ain't trying to let Jen find out all his business. So he was like, I'll think about that. I don't know about that. And the fact that he even said, I'll think about that, that should have told you that nigga was up to no good. But as soon as she heard down payment on the house, that's all her bird ass was worried about. So, um, when she was like, you know, well, you can think about all you want to continue to stay over there with your grandmama. This nigga conjures up some old fake ass tears. And of course, her dumb ass fall for it. He's wiping his tears away. And he tell her he's sorry. And she kisses him. I'm like, this nigga is a master manipulator, girl. Don't be fooled by niggas when they start crying. Niggas cry, fake cry too. Don't get it even twisted. So, um, what else? Fresher goes then to see Jada alone. And she asks what her payment is. And it's obvious they still got chemistry there between them and it's still like a sexual thing there between them. I don't think that I don't know if they have a sex deal, but you can tell that they still got chemistry. So he says now that he's taking out a loan, well, that she gonna have to wait on her money. But he don't tell her that. That's what he said in his confessional. He asks her, can he pay her twenty five hundred dollars a month? And she says if he doesn't pay her on time, she gets to add five hundred dollar penalty um to each late payment. Um, he vows to put it in writing. She wants some money now. She like, you got a new outfit on. She get to grabbing on him and stuff. Like, give me some money. He like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You can tell low key that he liked it. But now that he trying to work shit out with Jen, he can't have her doing all that. So uh, he says that he'll give her her first payment at the first of the month. Nah, bro. You should have stood up on that. Nah, we need to go to the ATM right now. I'm not waiting a whole nother month for you to pay me. You already late as it is. So she videos him saying that he's going to pay her. I was like, that video ain't going to mean nothing. You still going to be waiting. So um, they move into their new house. It's a really big house, but it does need a lot of renovations on the inside. But nonetheless, it's a really nice house. And I'm like, how are y'all about to pay for this house? So uh, he promised Jen that he is done lying and cheating, but he's still lying. <laughs> so Jen telling him that she wants marble countertops and she wants a uh, swing set and stuff for the kids. And he looking at her like, girl, do you know we barely got this goddamn house? He tell her she moving too fast. And then he tells her that he met up with Jada. And of course she get mad. And she like, why you meet up with her behind my back? Um, and he says, I didn't want to do her like that. And of course that pissed her off. It's obvious that his feelings for Jada are very much real. And he really does have real feelings for her because he handles her in a delicate way. Jen said, who the fuck is she? And she gets doing all that ghetto shit that she love to do, all that loud talking and cussing. And I'm gonna go to jail and I'm gonna kill a bitch. And I'm like, girl, you don't go sit somewhere down and go take a nap. So Fresh say we settled on the money. And Jen said, if she want a dollar, she taking us to court. And he ain't trying to do that because, you know, court situation is going to make it worse. It's more money than y'all going to be coming out y'all pocket. Your nigga owe this bitch the money. Let this man pay her. So Jen said, we're going to furnish my house first. Then we'll deal with this raggedy bitch. Y'all deserve each other. Y'all deserve each other because both of y'all are dumb as shit. Dumb as fuck. The fact that you even taking this nigga back says a lot about you bitch you don't give a fuck that your your boyfriend the father of your children is a scammer out here scamming bitches for money so he can provide a lifestyle for y'all he can't even do it on you know his talent or whatever like this nigga out here scamming bitches for money like y'all both look crazy so jim shows mama jones her new house it's a beautiful house um, it's, a, it's in the same plot of where her old house used to be, but it's just a brand new house built from the ground up. Um, she cries and thanks him. And then he tells her that Chrissy was the one to help with the design. And then she gets mad. She was like, I knew I wanted that red door. They get to going back and forth to Oregon over the house and shit. Then she get mad and told him he could take the house back. And she leaves and she come back and tell Jomo to leave. And it's just a mess, child. So, um, after Safari's show at SOB 
Um, no, it's Safari Show at SOB. Him and Fresher and Pat perform. And I like that song. I'm actually going to go listen to it because I like the vibe of it. I like Fresher's chorus. Fresher was going off when they was performing. I like his sound. Like, his voice is very distinct. So after the show, Safari tells Erica that he has to promote his new album for two weeks after they get back to Atlanta. And of course, she's not feeling that because she can go into labor any day. And that was basically the gist of the episode. Remy Ma's case got dismissed. And other than that, it really wasn't nothing to this episode. It was a filler episode at best. Um, hopefully next week's episode will be better. Overall, I give tonight's uh, episode a C-. minus. It was cool. It kept me entertained enough that I didn't fall asleep. Um, make sure you guys thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. And um, tomorrow, I'm having a live reading on Chapter 2 of my up-and-coming book on um gray and cam it's their final novel so we'll be uh doing a live reading of chapter two as a uh, thank you for you guys um being patient for the book to come out it's nowhere near finished but i'll be doing a live reading of chapter two chapter one um live reading is up right now so you can go listen to that if you want to if you guys have never heard of my work or listened or about any of my books go and check out uh the chapter one live reading of cam and gray's final um uh novel i'll link it down below in the description box if you want to listen to it so you can get excited about it and go and read the series before the last book drops love you guys talk to you later bye